thank you very much. And it's my really my uh, privilege to be here today at the panel panel member together with Dr. Majin and also two professors from Hong Yu. And indeed, that we have heard the uh, bigger picture of what is about green finance and then uh, the green projects along the Belt and Road Initiative. And then further, we heard from David about the hum uh, humanity and also like the value uh, and uh, yeah, sort of culture perspectives uh, uh, that would be evolved from the Belt and Road Initiative. Actually, I, I think, I thought that probably we should start with uh, Professor Ali that uh, how to prevent the dispute from uh, the Belt and Road projects. But uh, since I was assigned to be speak, speak, speaking uh, earlier than Professor Ali, I thought, okay, hmm, maybe we need to consider about how to resolve and then later on think, okay, since the disputes are too complicated to be resolved, therefore we need to prevent the disputes arise from uh, the projects. So of course, uh, I will, since we are based in Hong Kong, I will take this opportunity to let you know why Hong Kong is the best venue for commercial dispute resolutions in the projects under the Belt and Road Initiative based on case study, which I, uh, I drafted or I prepared based on my own uh, real experience, but of course, substantially revised for the purpose of today's presentation. Okay, hopefully in the next 10 minutes, I will cover the four uh, topics, but of course, very briefly, uh, why Hong Kong should be preferred for arbitration based on, uh, based on case study and the advantages and the uniqueness of Hong Kong arbitration. And then I'll let you know the very recent uh, developments of Hong Kong arbitration, including the third party funding and outcome related fee structures for arbitration. And last but not least, the intermeasures in out of Hong arbitration in Hong Kong. Let's uh, see a case study, as I said, that is based on a real case that I have handled. Uh, for example, a company headquartered in London called Green Retriever. Okay? But actually, in my case, it's a gold retriever. So, uh, but since that is not very uh, environment friendly, so I changed the name to a uh, green retriever. <laughs> and I'd like to invest in uh, wind power. And in my real case, that is a gold mine. In a Western African country, in January 2021, the green retriever at Go Green, which is a Chinese state-owned company based in Shanghai, decided to set up a joint venture company in that Western African country for developing wind power as a belt road project. The JV company will then use the income to develop hotels and retail malls in Guangdong, uh, in basically the Great Bay area. And don't ask me why they are going to use the money for this kind of uh, business development and operate an orga organic farm to provide organic vegetables and fruits for high-end supermarkets in Hong Kong. In terms of the different solution clouds, the GV partners don't know much about arbitration, but have heard that it may be better than court litigation. They want a neutral seat and have put down the precedent, which provides for arbitration in Paris and New York law. They are open to exploring what, whether Hong Kong is a viable option at the seat of the arbitration in here. Apparently for a UK company, it is quite neutral for them to prefer the London arbitration and neutral. And, right, and, and on the other hand, for the Chinese party, definitely that they want to go to Beijing or Shanghai, and we have CTAC or, or the other very well-known uh, arbitration institutions. So, but for both of them, it's very understandable that they don't want to their, go to their own hometown to resolve the disputes, so they need to choose a neutral, neutral place, and therefore Hong Kong probably is the best one, and lets us know why it is. So the considerations from both of the parties, let's see, and actually it covers basically um, uh, the major factors that when the parties choose a place for arbitration for the future dissolution, uh, why they choose that place. Okay, let's see from the UK company's perspective, i.e. the green retriever, whether Hong Kong is a neutral place, neutral seat for arbitration, and whether Hong Kong being a uh, being common law jurisdiction can be continued, can be maintained in the next uh, couple of years. The possibility of seeking pre-ward and post-ward intermeasures against Go Green, and enforceability and finality of the actual award against Go Green, and 
infrastructure, transport, and logistics, and relevant immigration controls for their witness to come to Hong Kong to give evidence. Um, well, in this case scenario, let's forget about the COVID, okay? Because COVID make everything dif different, and even Hong Kong, that uh, you know, is difficult for people to come, despite that we still, even that we still have to go through the three-day uh, quarantine. And from the Chinese company's perspective, um, they would consider, okay, whether Hong Kong has those international, internationally renowned arbitration institutions and the language skills of the lawyers and arbitrators and their formalities with the commercial, cultural, and the legal environment in mainland China is perhaps perfectly. That is also very important because, um, well, you can hear from my accent that actually I'm from mainland China, and, but I'm qualified as English, uh, Hong Kong, and Hong Chinese lawyers. So the very important issue is that uh, nowadays, the language is not really a problem because everyone can speak even not perfect English, but can communicate as well, at least in English. But the major problem is the mindset, the mindset barrier, the cultural barrier. Um, therefore, it is necessary for actually for both parties to find a place that who can communicate with no problem, with no barrier uh, with each of the parties. And of course, whether it is uh, uh, once uh, you got the actual award, whether it can be enforced uh, against uh, the UK company and then third party funding um, and other any other controls and powers that the actual award may exercise if, for example, the green retriever deploys, you know, like the delay, try to delay the arbitration or, or try to uh, challenge or set aside the award. And the, the last one actually is my favorite as well, because I would always would like to mention in Hong Kong, we all know it is a bonus to everyone, especially for the parties who would come to Hong Kong, is that we are the home of Michelin restaurants. Mm -hmm. And you can find whatever the food that you like in Hong Kong, basically, whether it's Chinese food and also the different places of Chinese food and also the Western food or like the, the South, uh, South uh, as Asian country food. So it's actually, I think, a bonus. And the next time that whether you sell, you, you, you want your friend to come to Hong Kong, then you just tell them you can find the best food from anywhere else but in Hong Kong. So, yeah. Let's see next. Okay. Does Hong Kong still have its neutrality as a seat of arbitration? This actually is a question I was being asked and quite a number of people are being questioned. You know, in the past few years, especially since uh, uh, 2019, uh, after the social unrest, and then later on after the national security law in place, and um, this has also happened in, actually in my real case scenario that uh, the UK company raised the question whether Hong Kong it still has the independent judiciary, whether Hong Kong will maintain the common law system despite we know that Hong Kong uh, has the common law system in place, and. Next time when you have this opportunity to explain to your uh, foreign friend, you can simply tell them that, yes, indeed, we as Hong Kong still have the neutrality and we have the very well established independent judiciary. And for example, like the Court of Final Appeal, we still have uh, 12 overseas non-permanent judges from like the UK, Canada, and uh, Australia. Um, and they are very well known uh, judges from those jurisdictions. And also like Lord Thompson, a former justice of the UK Supreme Court, and now also the non-permanent judge of the Court of Final Appeal said, and actually he said in the context of when his uh, former colleagues stepped on as the non-permanent judge, um, saying that the permanent judiciary of Hong Kong is completely committed to judicial independence and the rule of law. And one more important, important, important uh, point that I'd like to say, especially for arbitration, is that arbitration is a private one. And it's, it's entirely different to, uh, in this regard, it's entirely different to court because for both parties, they are entitled to choose their own trusted arbitrator. And then the arbitrator will appoint, the two arbitrators normally will appoint the third arbitrator. And the tribunal will not be intervened by anyone else unless, unless if there's any uh, um, uh, irregularity that during the conduct of the arbitration that they committed. Otherwise, no one, including uh, the arbitration institutions, has no say on 
how does the tribunal would run the arbitration. And I've never heard a single case that the arbitrator in Hong Kong or arbitral tribunal in Hong Kong had been influenced by any third parties. So the advantage, very quickly, the advantages and uniqueness of arbitration in Hong Kong, for example, um, the common law system, especially we know on 1st of July uh, this year when President Xi Jinping was in Hong Kong, in his very important speech de delivered uh, uh, at the ceremony of the 25th anniversary of the establishment of this uh, city uh, of the Hong Kong SAR, he specifically mentioned twice that one of the uniqueness of Hong Kong is common law and we need to maintain common law. And that it actually the first time for the leader, for the number one leader in China specifically and expressly mentioned about common law and value the common law. So you, we would know, you know how much you know, uh, the appreciation that the central government uh, to the common law system uh, uh, and making Hong Kong as the only jurisdiction among greater China uh, uh, as, a common, uh, as a common law jurisdiction. And so here, uh, the case is always referred. And I have the, a special feeling for this case because I was one of the case handler acting for Sha Gong uh, in this matter, and we won the case, of course. And very quickly, um, there are various, you know, uh, the modern, uh, modernized arbitration, uh, arbitration legal framework in, in Hong Kong. For example, we have the arbitration ordinance based on the procedural module law. And also, uh, like um, the arbitral award in, uh, issued in Hong Kong is final and bending and cannot be challenged on the point of law, uh, except that the parties uh, uh, adopt the relevant provisions to later challenge, uh, challenge it on the point of law. And also the actual awards made in Hong Kong are enforceable in many other jurisdictions under the, uh, uh, under the new convention, as well as between uh, with also like mainland China and Macau under the relevant arrangement with this jurisdiction. Um, yeah, so as mentioned, they, uh, uh, the, the most making Hong Kong the most uh, uh, different to the other jurisdictions, especially the competitors in the region, um, and also making Hong Kong the very unique one is the arrangement between Hong Kong and Milan China for the mutual, uh, for the uh, intermeasures in ad hoc uh, arbitration in Hong Kong. I will explain it in a bit later based on case that I handled. Yeah, again, you recall that I raised the question that whether Hong Kong has an internationally renowned arbitration institution. And we can see there are a number of uh, very well-known international arbitration institutions, uh, whether it is from, 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 from the other jurisdictions or from mainland China. And there are plenty uh, trusted uh, institutions that we can choose in Hong Kong. And also lawyers, arbitrators. So continue the facts. The many, of, many of the senior executives and in-house counsel of Green Retriever are from the UK. They want to know whether witnesses and lawyers need to apply for visa to take part in the arbitration proceedings in Hong Kong. And then for the Chinese company, the Go Green, they, from time to time, they have litigation arbitration cases in the PRC. And a million lawyer usually charge contingency fee. So Go Green understand that the legal fees in Hong Kong are relatively expensive, so it wants to know whether it can seek financial support from external parties if there are disputes that require arbitration in order to ease the cost burden. And, and, and also like uh, how to apply for the intermeasures uh, to freeze, for example, green retrievers assets in mainland China. And very quickly that uh, Hong Kong government launched a scheme to facilitate uh, the entry for arbitration participants. The reason why is because normally before uh, people would use the gray area that uh, to take the uh, visiting visa and come to Hong Kong or the uh, freezer free. But actually when you are coming to Hong Kong to do arbitration, whether you are the counsel uh, or, 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 or the witness, uh, witnesses or experts, actually suppose you require to, you are required to apply for the business visa to come to Hong Kong. And, 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 uh, and now because of this, uh, this scheme that uh, no longer 
the parties will require to apply for the business visa and they can use whatever the visa or free visa to come to Hong Kong and uh, they, that will not be challenged by the other parts. And also like the availability of third party funding in, Hong, in, in arbitration and the use of outcome related fee structures for arbitration. Very quickly, this two, this two uh, scheme were launched in the very, um, very, very recent, uh, very recent years. Uh, the third party funding was, uh, effect, was became effective in uh, 2019 and the uh, outcome uh, related fee structure we call the OFSA. Uh, it's just uh, it, it, the law is just come into effect uh, this year, and the uh, relevant rules are, are being negotiated and will be uh, formally announced by the end of this year. Basically, it provides more cost flexibility to the parties. The third party funding means that you can fund the third party funder to fund your arbitration. And this was not allowed. This is actually a breach of law in the common law jurisdiction, positionally. And now it is allowed for the third party founder. Basically, it's actually investor investing your arbitration. And then they will charge, of course, from what you recovered, the damages, and then as a commission for their, for their fee. And the outcome related fee structure means that um, the lawyers and your clients can discuss about the fee structure specifically for the case, whether you charge, uh, for example, even no cue, no pay, or no win, no pay, or uh, you can charge a uh, down payment and plus uh, the fees that you help the clients to recover a um, uh, percentage. Of course, there is a cap, like 50% uh, of you uh, you recovered for your clients from the other side. So that is making Hong Kong more, I would say, attractive because uh, basically people, when talking about Hong Kong arbitration, they think Hong Kong lawyer charge a lot, but actually I'm not, okay. <laughs> Uh, finally, about the intermeasures, um, that is, as I said, making Hong Kong very unique, very different to the other common law, uh, to the other leading arbitration centers. If only Hong Kong has this one. Um, um, that making Hong Kong that if, for example, uh, arbitration in Hong Kong from the U fund, the, the respondent has assets in mainland China, for example, in Shanghai or Beijing. Then as long as you satisfy the arbitration, satisfy the relevant conditions, which are very, uh, uh, um, uh, the hurdle is not very difficult to overcome, then you can apply to the relevant uh, court in mainland China, basically the assets or the property or the evidence based in that place to apply to that middle court in that place for the intermeasure, like the preservation of assets. So making to secure your claim at a, few, uh, at a later time. Because sometimes when the people uh, don't want to litigate or, or commence the arbitration, it's not because they don't have the good merits. It's simply because they found even they win the case, they cannot enforce that arbitral award. Basically, you will, you will have a paper, paper award. That's not what the party wants, and also, of course, lawyers, because if a good, a good lawyer, you need to, at the very beginning, to tell your clients not only whether you can win the case, but also whether you can enforce the case to get the money back. So that makes Hong Kong uh, unique, you know, that uh, in Hong Kong arbitration, you can apply for the intermeasures in mainland China to freeze the relevant assets. Uh, of course, depends on whether, uh, first of all, Basically, it must be a Hong Kong arbitration. And secondly, you find you can locate the assets even in China. So, yeah, I will not repeat here. I think that's it. Okay, thank you.